Today's discussion will be presented in three sections since we are recording it for radio broadcast on the Federal News Radio, part of the Federal News Network. You're welcome to post questions and comments during the session and we'll try to answer them online. I'd like to introduce our moderator, Jason Miller, Executive Editor of Federal News Network. Welcome to the discussion. My guests today are Howard Spira, the Chief Information Officer of the Export and Import Bank of the United States, Ben Bergerson, the CIO of the U.S. Trade and Development Agency, and Bill Rowan, the Vice President of Federal Sales for VMware. Gentlemen, welcome to the discussion. Before we get started, let me set some context for our discussion. There's more than 75 small or micro agencies across government, and like many of the large, well-known agencies, they face similar IT modernization challenges. These agencies range from a few people to a few hundred employees, and they face both advantages and disadvantages of, of being small or micro organizations. On one hand, many small agencies don't necessarily have the money or the people to do full-scale IT modernization, forcing them to deal with legacy technology, which, of course, opens them up to cybersecurity risks. On the other hand, small agencies can move more quickly with less approvals and, let's say, fewer lawyers mucking up the processes. <laughs> and even a little money can go a much longer way as they move to the cloud or upgrade their cyber defenses. One small agency CIO told me last year that his plan was to move to the cloud and stop spending on commodity technology. At the same time, small and micro agencies don't necessarily have the support, or maybe that's a good thing, the oversight from the Office of Management and Budget or Congress, because they're not spending tens or hundreds of millions of dollars on IT projects. Again, both a benefit and potentially a hindrance to IT modernization. Another small agency CIO told me recently how surprised he was when he moved to a small agency from a large one about how these agencies, small and micro agencies, really fly below the radar when it comes to OMB policies and requirements. So, how can small agencies take advantage of these technologies like cloud, like emerging ones, like machine learning, robotics process automation? Well, again, this is where our panel comes in. They're going to tell us the tricks of their trade, if you will. Let me start in the end with Ben. Uh, cloud, moving to the cloud, IT modernization, the strategy of it all. Uh, give me a sense, where are you guys today with that move to the cloud with your IT modernization efforts? Yes, thank you. We are moving in phases along with following the IT modernization cloud smart and president's management agenda, the PMA items. So we're taking bite-sized chunks and moving components of our agency piece by piece to the cloud. We got a great head start last year when we moved our entire federal agency from one location to another. And it was a perfect opportunity to say, should we move this to another building or should we move this to the cloud? and what is the strategy to make sure that the internal infrastructure is synced with our cloud services. And we did it with three different pieces. One is our core mission is to increase US exports and jobs into developing agencies uh, and developing countries. So we have a very mobile workforce that goes around the world looking for opportunities to sell US goods and bring US companies and partner with them. That means that everything has to be possible and available wherever you are. The second piece is following all of the cloud smart initiatives of, is this piece something that you can move in six months? Can you move it in three months? What are the incremental smart ideas to do? And then lastly, taking care of the shop to make sure that everything runs. Those are the three strategies that we used and it worked out very well. It's a rarity that an agency has that opportunity to pick up and move to a new building. Usually you talk about picking up and moving to the cloud or picking up and moving, but that probably helped you step back and say, do we really need that server? Do we really need that application? Was, is that, was that part of that discussion? Yes, we did a lot of contingency planning as well. So what are all the things that could go awry in a move? The power doesn't work, the electricity doesn't work, the phones don't work, and we built for resilience and the cloud was able to do that. We cached all of our data and synchronized it along our mobile devices as well as in the cloud. So we planned on walking into the new building on day one and not having a network or a phone system. And it brought a culture change around, especially when we got in there and for a little bit of time, Nothing did work because it was... <laughs> wait, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. You had a move and things didn't work? I have no idea what that's like. It was March of 2018. It was a big windstorm. The government had closed except for emergency um, employees. And our entire team was 
designated as mission essential because we were moving that weekend. It was also 40 to 50 mile per hour winds and not everything was there when we got there. But by the time the weekend was over, because we moved on a weekend, everything worked. People walked in and sat down at their offices. They could get to their email, they could print, they could get to their data analytics and the mission continued. But yes, we were there in the middle of the night making a lot of things work that didn't work when we walked into the room. Uh, congratulations on that, it's a tough move. We all know that firsthand sometimes. Uh, let me turn to Bill from VMware. One of the things when you talk about where agencies are today, give me a sense of what you're seeing from your customers. There's this big push to the cloud, but then every time I talk to a CIO, I feel like, well, we're just, and then you fill in the blank, moving, starting, application rationalization. Well, I think that, that it, uh, based upon what Ben said, you're seeing a, a very similar action. There's a series of steps they're going through. Probably the most common thing we see today is agencies that have moved their uh, core services, email, print, and file to the cloud using an Office 365 application, for an example. They get lessons learned from that and then start to look at the next set of applications that they think make the most sense for them to move. I don't think, I think we moved away from the one size fits all. There's obviously a, a lot more uh, services that are out there available today that are FedRAMP authorized. Agencies are now more comfortable with doing their own provisional authorities to operate uh, for various applications that are now becoming available. And so I think that the combination of having had the experience, whether it's through a move, a physical move, or moving a series of applications, as they take tackle the next set of applications, building in those lessons learned to ensure that there's not a bump in the road to services. Now, moving to the cloud is not going to eliminate any and all problems, uh, but I do think agencies are getting much better at it. Um, I think the other thing too that has happened is, as agencies have, have gone through the process, they're, they're doing a better job of analyzing what applications really make sense to use in the cloud. Am I going to save money? Am I going to gain greater agility? Am I going to give myself a lot of flexibility in the future. If they can't answer all those questions yes, then maybe that's not exactly the right application to move at this point in time. I'm going to be impressed here for a second. You didn't mention the word hybrid cloud. Well, give me a chance. All right, <laughs> give me a chance. All right, uh, Howard, let's talk about XMI, uh, XMIM Import Bank. Um, you guys have an IT modernization strategy. You were a guest on my Ask the CIO show in 2018, so catch me up of where we're at. Sure. Well, we continue to make progress on that uh, modernization, and I want to pick up on some of the points that Bill and Ben uh, mentioned. For us, uh, first of all, as a small agency, when we talk strategy, we got to keep that simple because we don't have a policy shop that's going to write a white paper that's going to articulate a strategy. So our strategy basically has, you know, I'll call it really three components, right? Uh, don't uh, build or write software that you can buy. Don't no new iron uh, in the shop. And, uh, and every tactical uh, decision that we make that's coming up, we look back at the first two points and say, is there a way to fit, uh, uh, fit into that? And uh, similar to what Bill uh, mentioned, um, that's taken us through a, a series of steps that leads us to having, I think, about 60% of our infrastructure in the cloud, and now we're actively working on the remaining 40. So the first piece in the cloud was when we moved all of our email services to Office uh, 365. The second major piece was when we moved our financial processing system uh, to a, uh, uh, I'll call it a SaaS offering uh, as well, so that uh, uh, that was a large uh, piece of, I'll, I'll call it sort of IT mass that now sits over at, uh, in our case, Oracle Managed Cloud Services. And then we have, you know, between 30 and 40 percent, I call it the retained infrastructure. And we're actively working on that because these are the, I'll call it the remaining sort of bespoke or custom applications that there really isn't a market for, so we're running it on our iron. And now uh, our real focus is what I call our infrastructure as a service play, mm -hmm. and how we're going to do that. And then we're going to, we've already broken that into two steps, because you mentioned the word hybrid cloud, we actually run in a hybrid environment. So basically, 80% of the services, of the servers that we have on-prem are already virtualized. And the remaining 20, uh, there is, I'll call it, either a licensing issue that would cost the agency dearly if we put it on, a, uh, 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 on our internal cloud, uh, or there is a, uh, I'll call it a technical issue about how old the application is, that there's something that we can't move. 
But uh, so from that perspective, like I said, 60 to 70 percent of the 60 percent of the mass is already there in a classic uh, commercial cloud. Uh, what's remained, 80 percent is already virtualized, which then makes the step of when we come up to our next hardware refresh of it's not going to be uh, on our I'll call it our internal cloud. We're going to move it to a commercial cloud. Bill, jump in. I think that the other thing too that gets lost and that. Uh, Howard's example is a good one, is that, that agencies that have moved a series of applications or are using software as a service from different providers, the lessons learned that they incorporate into their own private environments and how they make those environments even more efficient and more agile yeah. than they were before, taking some of those lessons learned. And I think that gets lost sometimes in the discussion of cloud, but agencies across the board, small, big, no different than uh, enterprise clients, have gained additional efficiencies in their internal operations or those internal clouds they've built that are continuing to show savings so that if something does need to be refreshed, they've figured out how to do it in such a manner that it's costing them less than it would have, say, three to five years ago. And those cost savings will continue to help drive down the, the overall cost of infrastructure and the services that are provided, whether it's to the citizens or to the employees within an organization. Interesting kind of we went through Howard and Ben's experiences with, with, the, with the modernization efforts. Let, let me switch instead of kind of going down the path of let's talk more about cloud, but let's talk about either Ben or, or, or Howard. Did you guys feel like you had an advantage of being a smaller agency to do this IT modernization? Obviously from Ben you had to move, but, but that's going to happen whether you're a big agency or a small agency. But as you kind of go down that path and say to your, your bosses and the people who run your, your the executives, other executives, hey, we're going to move this to the cloud. Is there, a, is there an easier path to that? Maybe Ben start? It is much easier as a small agency to move to the cloud. First point is the agency head, general counsel, and the deputy are right down the hallway and you can just go walk and talk to them and say, here's your vision of us being a noble, a mobile, nimble agency. Here's how we could do it. And you can sit down and talk to them and there aren't years of work to get that message to the head of the agency and get a decision. The next piece is you can very quickly leverage large agencies who have already paved the way. So you can go to GSA and get cloud contracts that have already got schedules assigned to them and you can talk to other agency heads and CIOs and say, okay, you move to the cloud for your email. What worked and what didn't? So it's the best of both worlds. You get the nimbleness of being a small agency. You also get the background knowledge of working with cabinet agencies because, well, we all talk to each other. At least we hope so, right? <laughs> Howard, what's your experience been like as a small agency? Sure, I think um, uh, I echo in everything that uh, Ben said about the uh, advantages. Uh, there just aren't, there isn't a lot of bureaucracy. There isn't a lot of hierarchy that you have to uh, um, uh, work through. A small agency, uh, even though we believe in our own complexity, is simply less complex than a large uh, uh, than a large uh, uh, agency. I think um, uh, also, uh, in a lot of cases, the small agencies can do very well by being, I'll call it, fast followers or state of the market, so they don't necessarily have to be pushing the bleeding uh, edge so we can take advantage of work that's been done. Uh, to the extent that I uh, think that there's any uh, disadvantage, and, and to be perfectly candid, I haven't spent a lot of time at large uh, uh, agencies, is I think there are certain, I'm going to call it administrative expertises <laughs> that are really uh, important to me to make sure that, that uh, in addition to the technology side from sort of the contracting and the finance side that we really are uh, managing the risks that are attendant in, 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 I'll call it, contracting out services. And sometimes I feel, uh, you, you know, we have great counsel, but we don't have an IT-centric administrative uh, counsel. We've got um, a strong finance team, but I do not have a, f a finance analysis who works specifically with us. So one of the areas that I find a little bit challenging is making sure that I've, I'll call it, lined up the money appropriately and understand sort of the consequences when we have something like a shutdown of, well, am I going to lose my cloud services if I can't pay a, a <laughs> vendor? Where's that in the contract? Is it in the contract? It, you know, uh, Usually uh, when I was in the private sector and, and worked for larger private sector companies, I had uh, 
administrative support in both legal and contracting and budget and finance that work specifically with the IT team to make us really comfortable that we have those bases covered as well. Uh, Bill, jump in, because what's your experience when you see, uh, when, you, when you have different clients and customers from between large and small and even medium-sized agencies, whether we're talking about a labor department or an interior department or, or maybe even um, a big bureau within you know, census department, at Census Bureau, for example, do you see a difference in, in, in that move to the cloud? I, I, I do. I think that in kind of echoing both, uh, both Ben and Howard's comments, certainly the lessons learned from another organization. What did they experience? What were the challenges? What were the problems? Certainly the contract issues, you know, GSA may have a plethora of contracts available. That doesn't mean XYZ agency is not going to say, well, we can do it better. We think we can be more efficient and then we'll spend nine to 10 months trying to execute a contract versus doing some task order off of those pieces. The other aspect of it is, is, is really just simple physics. It is going to be easier to move a thousand or three thousand mailboxes mm -hmm. To, uh, to a cloud environment, if you will, than trying to move 150,000 boxes. The, the chances are that if you, you can have, you can take what you've learned, improve on the process, maybe you take a small organization. And the same thing comes with, there's a lot of resistance inside of bigger agencies, irrespective of where the data center might be of, well, this is the way we've always done it. And there's so many layers of folks that are resistant to change, irrespective of whether it will change anything about the way they do their job, there's still a sense of, of I don't want to lose control. And I think organizations of a smaller or medium size can say, listen, this is going to give us an opportunity to leapfrog where we would otherwise be and use it as an actually a, a financial and competitive advantage in terms of accomplishing our mission. And I think that's the part that's harder to share upon a larger organization, but can be much easier, much easier consumed by a small or medium-sized agency. And the last component to it is, our experience has been, both with enterprise clients, state and local agencies, which this really applies to smaller municipal organizations are, there is not as much uh, or not as many hundreds of pages of process and procedures <laughs> that have lived in lore for years. And therefore, they're not going back and forth with legal organizations or various communities of interest to say, well, we want to change things. As, as Ben alluded, you can walk down the hall, get the various people that are going to have to be involved in the decision, make the decision and move out. And that saves a countless amount of money that would otherwise just be involved in the churn for months and months and months. I know why you all laughed when I made the lawyer joke earlier. We're going to take a quick break. You're listening to the panel discussion, Implementing a Hybrid Cloud Solution in Government, sponsored by VMware on Federal News Radio, part of the Federal News Network.